All right, so three, two, one, clap, okay? Three, two, one, clap. Is that good enough? Yeah. We were we were definitely not yeah we were not in sync at all. We were definitely the back. That's going to be the story of this little thing right here. Okay? I, I, I was gonna say we were definitely the Backstreet Boys on that. One. <laughs> we're, we're gonna we're gonna run it. So I like that joke. All right, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to Artist Alley. My name is John Davis. On this show, we're gonna take a look at interesting people from the Knoxville, East Tennessee area, whether they be independent business owners, musicians, artists, interesting people we find on the street that seem to know what they're talking about, which is kind of what we did today. I'm just kidding, make, make a little joke. But with us today, we have Benton Caster. Yep. So how you doing? Man, I'm doing well. Just glad to be here, see what you guys got going on. I appreciate it. It's not much. <laughs> At least you're honest. <laughs> I try to be, but I'm a liar, so you never can tell. All right, so first things first, why do you do what you do, which is? Uh, I'm, a, I'm a barber here in Knoxville. Okay. Um, man, I started cutting hair when I was 12. I grew up uh, Western Heights, it's a housing project here in Knoxville, real poor. You know, my mom trying to raise three three kids. She couldn't afford to get us haircuts, so I bought a set of clippers and went to work. I got you, man. Like that, that I mean, that makes a lot of sense. Like, you, I, I I'm the same way. Like, I grew up like me and just it was just me and my mom. Yeah. We we had like this old broken down trailer on a, like a piece of property my grandma owned, and it was like we just kind of made do with what we had. You know, like it. I had long hair. I still have long hair for a long time just because I was like, you know what? Haircuts cost money. Yeah. I don't need that. I don't need that. Yeah. We'll just, we'll just let it grow. <laughs> but I mean, that is, that is fantastic that you took something like that. You turned, I guess, a negative into a positive, like, you know, having to do that as a child, like, obviously it's not ideal, but you turn that into something, into a career. Yeah. Like, and it is, it, it's really, really cool, man, because you know, at first you got to fuck them up to get them right. Let's just, oh, yeah. let's just be real honest. You know what I mean? It's like, and if you're going to mess up, you might as well mess up on yourself, you know? Yeah, I was going to say, or your, your siblings, like, mess them up. They, and they'll be like, oh, man, I messed that fade up. So I got to click this back one more. Oh, okay, there it is. Like, <laughs> and, that's, that's and that's what it looks like, you know what I mean? It's a process, bud. I got you. Okay, so now we're going to get into less serious questions. Okay. We're going to see how you do with these. Okay. I'm, I may not be qualified, all right? I'm barely qualified to ask him, man, so you're doing all I'm right. a good company. <laughs> I do need to come up with a name for him, like, you know how, like, Sway has, like, the five fingers of death and stuff? Like, I need to come up with a name. Like, I feel like that'd be cool. Have you seen the hot sauce? The little hot sauce show? Uh, the hot sauce. Uh, hot, hot ones? Yeah, yeah, hot ones. Yeah, I need I need to come up with something. Yeah, something good. Yeah, because it's like, I don't know. I don't have anything to go into these. But I'll find something. All right, so first one's first. What is the most memorable meal you had? Now, it doesn't have to be the food. It could be, like, the situation outside of it. Like, I've had plenty of Christmas dinners that were just your standard turkey and stuffing and all that good stuff or whatever. And then, like, all hell breaks loose and there's fights. And then that's the part I remember. The food's okay, but, like, <laughs> when you see two uncles, like, swinging at each other and they knock down the Christmas tree, it's a memorable meal. See, but it could be the food for you, too. I mean, whatever. What, what's most memorable for you? My story is definitely not as good as that. <laughs> I remember I used to I used to cut trees and do like landscaping for a living. And one of our guys, you know, he's, he's a little Mexican dude and he would always bring just random stuff. Right. And he would never tell you what it was until you were until you had already ate it. And he brought this stuff one day, man. And we're sitting there chowing down. and I'm loving it, loving it, man. Thinking this was the best thing in the world. And so finally we called him Salty. His name was Solomon. I said, I said, Salt, I said, what is this? He's like, oh, bro, that's goat brains. And, you know, it's, it's so for me, the meal was the, you know, the memorable part yeah. because who eats goat brains, right? And yeah. apparently, like, it's some some level of delicacy to them. Yeah. And it's like, I'll never try that again, but it was oddly satisfying at the same time. <laughs> you know, it's like a one and done scenario. So for me, like, I'll, I'll never be able to forget that, you know, because yeah. it was good, but so disgusting at the exact same time. So, like, if it, let, let's say you, you ate it again, like, not knowing not knowing and like you hit that and it like you taste it and you're like oh man this is really good <laughs> and that's what it would look like, like, like flashback instantly takes place okay and you would be like no nah, i'm done yeah I can't because it's and, even and though like, even though you really enjoyed it yeah and, and that was the thing because it was like a different <laughs> texture and taste at the same time right so like you won't forget it but it was really good it's so 
somebody, even if somebody tried to sneak it in, like I would know what it was. Yeah. And I would probably lose control just because of the thought process of eating a brain. Like yeah. who, who's like, Hey man, I'm going to eat some goat brains. You know, this sounds like a great idea. No, not happening. <laughs> not happening. That is a, that like you, you were kind of worried about giving answers, man, but that one's fantastic. Well, like, that's mean, a, you you asked a good question, you know? I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> All right. So what is the most trivial thing that you have a strong opinion about? Like, what is something that nobody would care about, but you're like, oh, my God, this. Like, for me, to give an example, like, driving down the road, like, on the interstate, mm -hmm. I have cars in front of me in the fast lane, and they're getting passed. I'm like, I'm about to be Dale Earnhardt put this dude in the wall, man. Like, it drives me crazy. It's like, if you're getting past, man, come on. Like, just just get over. Like, it, it, it it's trivial. Like, it doesn't matter. But to me, it, it drives me crazy. I guess, I guess for me, like, going into someone else's house, right? Like, I don't care how you live, right? I can come into your house and be comfortable as long as, like, the environment's cool and we're, you know, conversation's good or whatever the case may be. But, like, if you come into my house and you pick something up and you do not put it back where you got it from well i i can't even i can't even live with myself at that moment right <laughs> like everything inside of me is just irking and it's like it's like walking on pins and needles i, I it doesn't matter no you know what yeah. i mean but i compartmentalize everything in my brain and so for me it's like the end of the world if you pick my tv up tv uh, tv remote up and you do not put it back exactly where you got it from I'm literally losing everything inside oh. of me at that moment. Oh my god! Stupid, right? Means no, nothing makes no yeah. sense. But for me, it's the end of the world, dude. Like I, I, I get it. <laughs> I, I'm not nearly that bad. Cause I, I mean, it's a touch. <laughs> it's, it's, it's rough, right? It's borderline. Yeah. You might need a little bit of medication. It, I'm gonna say it's it's very OCD ish. Yeah, -ish. slightly, slightly. <laughs> but yeah, I, I completely understand. I get it. Okay, so. What is something you hope to accomplish before this year is over, for the year of 2022? So I'm working on something right now, and a, and a goal for me, um, you know, growing up poor and not having the ability to really, you know, ha have things, right? Mm -hmm. I'm working on a project to where I can get 20 local barbershops here in Knoxville to shut down their business for one day to provide completely free haircuts for anybody that walks through the door, man. It doesn't matter if you roll up in a hundred thousand dollar Porsche or you haven't showered in 10 days. You know, for me, this is an opportunity. Like I love to serve people. Right. Yeah. And so that's why this, this fits so well. And so for me, I see an opportunity to serve those in need, you know, without asking questions, just because somebody rolls up in a nice car or they have nice clothes on, doesn't mean they're they're not carrying a lot of baggage. Right. And that baggage, even though it may be wrapped in a different suit, really is no different than someone who's sleeping out here on the streets, you know, because yeah. I've, I've been on both ends. You know, I was a homeless drug addict. I slept on these streets. I slept, you know, on the park benches right underneath the sun sphere. And so I know I know what it's like. Um, so just an opportunity to give back is something that's real big on my heart. So that's what that's what my goal is for this year. Dude, that's fantastic. I hope it I hope it succeeds, man. Like, we'll we'll do what we can. I mean, we're not very big, but like we. <laughs> We'll do what we can. We'll spread out messages and stuff like because that's that's a fantastic, that's fantastic, man. I mean, because there, I mean, there are people out here that like. I'm not. I was never a homeless drug addict or anything yeah. like that. I was homeless for a couple of weeks, like nothing major. But yeah. um, there are people that don't that have never lived that way that have been very you know quote unquote privileged that wouldn't necessarily see that as a good thing. They're like, well, why am I not making money? It's like, no, it's not about money, man. It's, it's, about, it. it's about helping. It like is. you help everybody. Yep. That's that the two tenants I try to live my life by no more than you knew yesterday and help everybody or help everybody you can don't hurt anybody, yeah. you know, like help everybody you can and just know more than you knew yesterday. Yeah. And I mean, uh, so far it's guided me pretty well. well you know? it, and it's simple, right? Like it, it doesn't, you don't, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to be a good person, right? Yeah. You know, we live in a world full of animosity and trash and baggage and people want to tear each other down. I mean, what's 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 wrong with saying something good to somebody? You know what I mean? Even if I don't like you, I can find something good about you. Yeah. You know, everybody has a good quality. It takes more effort to, to seek that out into someone than it does to just point out all the negativity. Yeah, so. a lot, I'm about to say, a lot of people don't want to take that effort. I mean, even as little as it can be, well, it's, to just it's ask minimal. a question. Yeah, you know, people don't want to take that effort to to get to know somebody and ask them, like, "Hey, like, how are you? Yeah, like, what's going on with yeah. you? You know, what can I do to help? Yeah, you know." And I mean, it, it's 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 very sad nowadays. It is, man, and it's like I said, it's it's prevalent. It's everywhere, yeah. and you see it. So 
Let's try to be a little bit different. Yeah. Don't don't watch the news. <laughs> but you're that's, not wrong. That, that's what I try to do. I try to not watch the news. So, I mean, if you watch the news, everything's terrible. Yeah. But, I mean, if you watch the people, yeah, man. you know, it's not nearly as bad as they say. Not, people are beautiful, man. Yeah. That's a fantastic end to that question. I appreciate people it. People are beautiful. I love it. All right. So, what is one admired profession? Like, what's something you look at and you're like, that is, I, I love that, but you could never do. Oddly enough, given the situation, like public speaking. Okay? <laughs> Let me go ahead. Before you answer, <laughs> yeah. you're doing great. <laughs> well, you know, it's, like I said, I think it's really cool what you guys are doing. And so to have the opportunity to come out here and just be a part of um, something like this, I, I think it's really, really neat. And it pushes me out of my comfort zone. I, I strive to, you know, like you said, be better today than you were yesterday. Right. Yeah. So this is my opportunity to be better today than I was yesterday. Um, but public speaking for me is is a beautiful thing because in a moment you have the opportunity to either build someone up or tear someone down. And, and, and if you watch public speakers, right, they, they have a captive audience. And a lot of times it doesn't have anything to do with the words that are coming out of their mouth as much as the energy that they carry in that moment, yeah. right? You could be saying totally meaningless stuff, but if your energy's right, people are going to be hanging on the edge of their seat. Whereas if you get up there and you're mundane and you're dull, like nobody's, even, nobody's interested. Even if you're dropping knowledge. Even if you're dropping knowledge. And so your delivery is key. And so when you take people who are in that capacity, but they're dropping knowledge with that right energy, man, it's 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 so seamless and it's yeah. so cool to watch, you know what I mean? Because you have the opportunity to change someone's life. And for those who do it and do it well, man, I admire that. I love it. I got you. Okay, so we got two questions left. Uh oh. It's go time. Now. It's go time. It's go time. <laughs> these these are the important questions. Okay. Who would win in a fight between Smokey the Bear and McGruff the crime dog? So I'm going to go against the grain here, bud. I got to believe in Smokey the Bear. Man, you're hurting me. You were having a good interview till then. Well, you know, <laughs> you, you, you got to set a standard somewhere, right? The rest of the questions, we, we can get through that. But Smokey the Bear, well, he lives in the woods, right? Okay. I mean, he, he's, he's out there with like, <laughs> so in theory, right? We don't know if he actually lives in the woods, but in all the commercials and stuff, he's coming out of the woods. So I'm just going to assume that my man Smokey lives in the woods, gotcha. right? Oh, have you ever lived in the woods? I lived in the backwoods of like, not like the woods. Yeah. I lived in like, you know, when you hear the backwoods. the woods where you cook meth, right? Right, you know, right. <laughs> I didn't cook it, but I, I was in the area. Um, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> vicinity is key, bro. <laughs> but I didn't grow up in the woods, but I grew up in like the the backwoods. Like right. when you hear the banjos, yeah. stop about 10 minutes before that. That's where I grew up. Well, that's detrimental to your health. I'm very well aware. Right? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and then, you, you know, for me, like you look at an inner city cop, right? So we, we, yeah. we, we look at the crime dog here. Well, I, I it's not that bad. It, it's, <laughs> it's, it's really not. Okay. So you, you got, you, you might get shot at, right? Cool. Let's go down here to the projects. You might get shot at too. <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? But other than that, dude, they're eating Chinese food and donuts. I mean, how bad, how bad can it really, really be? You know, you, 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 listen, bro, you got Smokey out there living off the fungus among us. You know what I'm saying? And so for me, that man is way more qualified when it comes down to it. I, I, can't, I can't argue with that answer. It was so good, man. Like, you're speaking with that energy and you're dropping knowledge. Like, you hit me. Well, you, you know, hit me, man. Like, tell I like what you know. Yeah. All right, so we're on a final question. Okay. And before we get there, I'm going to go ahead and let you, I'm going to throw it to you, let you throw it out to the people and to the, this okay. camera right here. Let them know where they can find you, where your business is, and, you know, that way we try to drum you up some business. Okay, I appreciate that. Yeah. Our shop is Covenant House of Grooming. We're located at 5317 Stanton Road, which is right behind Litton's Restaurant out there in Fountain City. Um, Facebook, Covenant House of Grooming. Uh, Instagram is Covenant Hog. And that's really about all I care about. So we don't, we don't, we don't get any other social medias. We do have a website. It's covenantgrooming.com. And uh, so we look forward to seeing you. Yeah. And as always, we will uh, link all this stuff down in the description. So go ahead, check it out there. Go check them out. They're doing good things. And hopefully by the end of the year, we can get you up and uh, 
what you say it was 20 you want to get like 20, 20 the, the goal is to cut 2000 heads in a day and so okay. for, for that to really be accomplished it's it's looking like we'll need roughly 20 shops a day based on how many heads you can turn per shop all right yeah let's so let's hope we get there man because yeah. that that's a fantastic it. goal appreciate it so final question mm -hmm. what is the best piece of advice you have ever gotten about anything i really this is this is twofold for me Okay, so the first one, I, I remember hearing growing up, my grandfather would say, no matter what your job was, if you did it to the best of your abilities, you'll never go without. Okay, whether it was sweeping the floors, cleaning toilets, it doesn't matter, right? If you put in every ounce that you have, someone will see that and opportunities will, will manifest due to, due to your work. Yeah. The second one is uh, when preparation and opportunity meet, success is bound to happen. And so for me, looking looking into the future of what I want to see. That's why doing these things right here, right? I, I'm believing that I'm going to get to cut those 2000 heads in a day. And so for me, this is just an avenue of preparation for that opportunity when it manifests itself. And yeah. so I'm just, I'm just believing that success will happen. And so that's, those, those are two that are really near and dear to my heart. All right, man. That's fantastic. And that's it. Appreciate you survived, it. man. We're here. I'm not even sweating, bro. Dude, you're, I'm going to say you got that dry <laughs> fish shirt on, man. You're looking good. But, all right, so I appreciate it, bro. No problem, man. We're gonna get you to pick a color. I gotta have that green. Gotta have that green. That's